and endless debt? The parable of the unmerciful servant. In Matthew chapter 18, we have the parable of the unmerciful servant. I recently had a brother argue that this parable indicates a debt that can never be repaid, and therefore this means it's endless punishment. This man is in a Roman debtor's prison, shackled with a debt, the equivalent of millions of dollars. Making an average day's wage, he would be in there for thousands of years, unless he can find the money. I agree, this is a dire situation, and that's the point of the parable. But the argument that this teaches endless punishment is a failure to understand who this man is and what the purpose of debtor's prison is in ancient Rome. Reading in Matthew chapter 18, starting in verse 21 from the ESV, Then Peter came up and said to him, Lord, how often will my brother sin against me and I forgive him? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, I do not say to you seven times, but seventy-seven times. Therefore the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his servants. When he began to settle, one was brought to him who owed him ten thousand talents. And since he could not pay, his master ordered him to be sold with his wife and children and all that he had and payment to be made. So the servant fell on his knees imploring him, Have patience with me and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the master of that servant released him and forgave him the debt. But when that same servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him, he began to choke him, saying, Pay what you owe. So his fellow servant fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you. But he refused and went and put him in prison until he should pay the debt. When his fellow servants saw what had taken place, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their master all that had taken place. Then his master summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you plead with me, and should not you have had mercy on your fellow servant as I had mercy on you? And in his anger, his master delivered him to the jailers until he should pay all his debt. So also my heavenly Father will do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother from your heart. As Christians, we need to be very careful how we react to the news of the king throwing this unforgiving person into debtor's prison. Our reaction can reveal a heart of unforgiveness in ourselves. There is a whole lot going on in this parable that doesn't immediately meet the eye, but for the sake of brevity, I'm going to go straight to the heart of the matter. First, I would like to note that if Jesus meant to teach endless punishment, using the word until in the passage is not being transparent with his thoughts at all. And in fact, he's giving us exactly the opposite idea. As big as this debt is, it is a finite debt. The question we need to ask isn't if, but how this man is going to get out. To understand the parable, we first need to understand the purpose of Roman debtor's prison. This is the ancient method of forcing someone into bankruptcy. There is no advantage for a creditor to make a debtor just rot in prison. The reason they throw them into debtor's prison is to force them and their family to liquidate all of that person's assets and negotiate for their release. First we need to observe this man is no day laborer. He is a prince or a high official who answers directly to the king. Kings don't just loan out millions of dollars to anyone. This is a very wealthy man. Telling the king he will pay it back wasn't a completely outrageous claim. He knew he could appease the king by selling off pieces of his own personal empire bit by bit. The point is, that amount of money doesn't just evaporate into thin air. 
he would have had purchased an enormous amount of valuable goods, real estate, and other assets. This man has great wealth. He likely owns his own palace, has gold on the ceiling, outrageous clothing and jewelry, not to mention hidden money and investments. This man is ostentatiously wealthy. He flaunts it. He has the money. It's just tied up in his personal empire that is about to come crashing down. This man is going to pay off this debt, metaphorically speaking, exactly the same way someone who is bankrupt today pays off a debt. He is going to liquidate all of his assets to pay the debt. That's what debtor's prison is forcing him to do. This man is going to endure a great fall and become completely bankrupt and destitute before God, exactly where he needs to be. But just for the sake of argument, let's take this parallel of a Roman debtor's prison to its logical, finite conclusion. Let's assume this man's assets fall short of the amount needed. If you are thrown into a Roman debtor's prison, you are at the mercy of family, friends, and the kindness of strangers to feed you, or you'll starve in there. People would make donations towards your eventual release. As Christian believers, we are obligated to help get this man out. Remember Christ's words, I was in prison and you didn't visit me. That's what he was talking about. That hopeless person in prison, Christ likened to himself. Worst case scenario, assuming this is real money we're talking about, we as Christian believers are obligated to get this man out because God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. But let's be real. God has no need for money. The only point of this parable is this man must be completely bankrupted before he can get out. The debt this man owes to God is a debt of the heart. Christ said, So also my heavenly Father will do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother from the heart. This parable is a warning to God's people. It's a warning about what the love of money can do to a person. After being forgiven a debt equal to millions of dollars, out of callousness and greed, he throws a poor man into prison over a hundred denarii, over a petty debt. This man was completely blinded by the love of money, and that had hardened his heart. This man is spiritually blind and needs his sight back. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Some have been led astray from the faith in their greed and have pierced themselves through with many sorrows. This man is indeed in deep trouble with God. But instead of seeing this hard-hearted man in the parable as hopeless, we need to see him as being bankrupted and made completely destitute of the heart before God. Only after this man is brought to a place of absolute desperation will he learn how to be a compassionate, loving, and merciful servant. That's the point of the parable. Listen, we brought nothing into this world and we are most certainly not taking anything out. The only commodity of any real value are the people all around us. None of our possessions are coming with us. Only the people around us will be there. They alone are of infinite value. Let's not betray our brothers and sisters for silver like the unmerciful rich man did. This man repays his debt to God in full when through bankruptcy of the heart is made completely destitute before God. When he lays down everything he has, falls to his knees and confesses all his sins, confesses that Jesus is Lord and learns how to be a loving and merciful servant. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. That is the place we all need to come to before God in order to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Let's do this the easy way by falling to our knees and confessing Jesus as Lord today. Don't be a lover of money. You will pierce yourself through with many sorrows. We need to forgive others because we also are destitute and bankrupt before God who has forgiven us. God bless you. Thank you for listening.